Nobody ever seems to have heard of this thing, and I sure as hell hadn't. In fact, I didn't even realize I owned it until a few years after the fact, so let's have a look at it. Hello everyone, I'm High Treason. This is the first video of 2019. It's nothing too big or elaborate, but I figure it's worth having a look at this thing because I just don't see these around very much. As I said, I didn't even know I had this one. It's a Trident Blade T64, or Trident Blade XP as it seems to also be known. It's an AGP video card from around 2001. I suppose we'll actually have a look at it as usual rather than just me standing here. That's the done thing. I don't see any reason to argue with what appears to work. This card sure as hell isn't pretty to look at, that gorgeous piss yellow colour, the little glued on heatsink and just the general finish of the thing reeks of budget computing in the early 2000s, when the technology was getting ridiculously cheap and the capacitor plague was in full swing. In its defence, that little glued on heatsink is definitely large enough to dissipate the heat generated by the GPU, unlike a certain other card we might see later on today. Also, the capacitors haven't leaked or exploded yet, so, well, I guess this one avoided the plague. I don't know if they're all like that, I've not really seen another one in person to figure that out. I won't be pulling that heatsink off, as I don't think I could replace this card if something were to wind up broken. But there's just a plastic BGA chip under there with a model number on it anyway, which won't tell us anything we don't already know. At the back of the card is 32 megs of SD RAM, which runs at 166 megahertz. Some cards came with half of this amount and were clocked lower. The GPU core clock is the same as the SD RAM at 166 megahertz on this card. Beyond that, you can clearly see the layout for optional TV output, but none of it's populated on my particular board. It isn't hard to convert VGA signals to something like composite or S video by now anyway nor is it particularly costly, but it's nice to know such an option existed. I would certainly have used that at the time this card was relevant. Unusually for its time, this card uses a full-size EEPROM chip to store its BIOS instead of a smaller PLCC package or incorporating it into the GPU itself, as NVIDIA was starting to do. Stranger still, it's actually sat in a socket instead of being soldered to the PCB. I've seen quite a few budget cards that did away with the socket entirely to save half a cent. My card uses the AGP4X interface, it should work in an older 2X slot just fine. In fact we know it does, because that's what I'll be using it in. There's also a PCI version. Good luck finding either of them, it doesn't seem to be particularly common. That's pretty much it, there's nothing remarkable about the PCB at all. It's no frills and no gimmicks, you probably wouldn't notice it if you walked right by it. Been practically indistinguishable from contemporary cards of the time. What we have here is my AMD K62. We've seen it before, and if you're around for that, well, then you're probably going to figure out where this is going pretty fast, and yeah, I'll have the stopwatch at the ready because you know somebody's going to bite. Now, as this system is quite fast, I won't waste your time showing the benchmarks running too much, and I'll be moving on to charts quite quickly, and really we're probably going to see more footage of games in this one. But in the meantime... Here is the card that this system used before, a 3DFX Voodoo 3 2000. Like the Blade T64, it's quite ugly to look at, but it doesn't really matter in either case because these cards go inside a PC where you're not going to see them. The Voodoo also has unpopulated optional TV output and seems to use SD RAM, but only has 16 megs. It doesn't have the original heatsink because that was far too small and made me nervous. This card is slightly older, been released in 1999 instead of 2001, and only features an AGP2X interface, as far as I'm aware. The GPU and SD RAM are clocked slightly lower at 143 MHz instead of the Blade's 166 MHz. The whole thing's 128-bit, however, whereas the Blade T64 only has a 64-bit memory bus. It might also be worth noting that some Voodoo 3s came with SG RAM, but mine doesn't seem to have done that. My K6 uses a Chaintech 5 AGM2 motherboard, which is based on the VIA MVP3 chipset. Now, I'm not here to debate whether you like VIA, ALI, or whoever else's chipset better, and which one works. This one works fine for me, I've never had a problem with it, so it'll have to do. 
Well, I guess we'll do DOS first, as we usually do. 3D Bench, PCP Bench and Top Bench are all won by the Voodoo 3. Been most noticeable in 3D Bench, with 383 versus only 288. But this change has been only marginal in PC Play and Top Bench, 119 versus 102 and 505 versus 488 respectively. The Voodoo's still winning, but the gap's getting quite small. SpeedSys gives us relatively little information on the GPU, but all of the scores are unaffected by either card being installed, aside from the Visa memory score, which figures, because that's specific to which video card you're using, I guess, as to how fast it can go. 66 megs per second for the Voodoo, versus only 24 megs per second for the Blade. As with all these tests, I do wonder if it'd be faster in AGP4X slot, but I have a feeling it isn't. It was probably designed to be PCI-friendly and laptop-friendly. At least that's my suspicion, so probably not really going to get much of a boost by doing that. Doom is slightly faster on the Voodoo at 124 frames per second, versus 100 frames per second for the Trident, but again, it's not a huge gap. And let's be honest, you're not going to notice, especially when the game's limited to, like, 35 frames a second. Under Windows, we have 3D Mark 99, which is a DirectX 6 benchmark. This is fitting, as both cards are designed for DirectX 6. The Blade scores 1840 in this test. Strangely, the Voodoo 3 scores 2570, despite failing a couple of tests entirely and not running them all that much faster overall. In fact, I think some of them ran slower. So, I don't really know what to make of that. You're going to have to call that one. Clearly the Voodoo won. I guess it did something that I just didn't notice. It is a 3D FX card, after all, and we all know that those are totally the best. Apparently. On the face of it, you're probably not all too impressed with the Blade T64, then, and I wouldn't blame you. There's not much information about it on the internet, and there's a couple of pages out there that suggest it sucks major balls. It really isn't that fast, at least not on my K6 board, and it's been outstripped by a card from 1999. So it seems. And now I'm going to tell you why the Blade T64 is actually brilliant. In fact, it's better than the Voodoo 3 in a good few ways, and we just haven't seen that yet. Perhaps we shouldn't overlook it all too quickly. For one thing, the Blade T64 isn't really that much slower in DOS. At the speeds the K6 can run your games, there just isn't any noticeable disadvantage most of the time, and the CPU is going to chirk long before the frame buffer becomes an issue if you start turning settings up. It isn't like DOS games ever really use any acceleration beyond Visa. I suppose some did have 3DFX support, but this almost certainly targeted older cards like the Voodoo 1 and, at a stretch, the Voodoo 2, so they may not work properly on the Voodoo 3. In fact, they probably won't which would render the fact it wouldn't work on the Blade either completely irrelevant here. Plus, early 3D accelerated modes generally looked worse than software, and in my experience, ran worse too. The 3D FX card also has problems with colour palettes at times, something we're going to see more of in a moment, so... Yeah, I wouldn't recommend the 3D FX card for DOS, but the Blade seems to be pretty good at it. Now, in Windows, the Blade T64 has its time to shine. We could sit here and rattle on about RAM decks and which one is better. <laughs> it's not really 32-bit on the Voodoo. But in all honesty, neither card's really that great here. They both have mediocre image quality and colour depth at best. We could even talk about MPEG acceleration, a feature the Blade T64 offers and the Voodoo doesn't. But that's not important either, and what is there is incredibly primitive. What does matter for this K6 is games, as my Pentium 2 is there to do actual work, and seems to do much better at it. Largely because it was built to do that, and the K6 wasn't. Little Big Adventure 2 doesn't run right on the Voodoo. The colour palette gets messed up. It works fine on the Blade. Atlantis doesn't run right on the Voodoo. Actually, it's completely broken. You wouldn't be able to play that. It works on the Blade, though. In fact, cutscene timing is perfect on this system now. He's traveling to the palace, where he will join the select band of Queen's Companions. Although he doesn't know it, Seth is destined to face ancient mysteries and grave dangers. An adventure whose outcome may well decide the very fate of Atlantis. Test Drive Off-Road 3 doesn't run right on the Voodoo, despite having dedicated support for it. The textures get broken. 
it's very slow on the blade, but the textures aren't broken, and it doesn't crash. Yeah, it's prone to crashing on 3DFX cards, so, well, it's going to run faster, but it's going to crash a lot faster as well. Pick your poison, I guess, you can't really win with this one. Both cards suck at playing it. Instate 76 does not work properly with the Voodoo. Palette troubles again, you know I'm noticing a pattern here. And serious texture corruptions, you know I think I'm noticing a pattern here. It works on the blade without issue, or as without issue as Instate 76 could ever be. Seems stable, there's not really any visual bugs outside of what we can expect from Activision's terrible rendering engine. Blood 2 works perfectly on the blade, or as perfectly as it ever would. This game's terrible, but this is the best I've ever had it run, and it managed to do so for several hours of multiplayer not all that long ago without breaking down, so I think there's something to be said for that. Now obviously Unreal Engine games are probably going to run better on the 3DFX card, but that's largely because the Unreal Engine was weighted towards running on the 3DFX cards, a bit like Quake was sort of optimised for Pentiums really. So, I don't know if that's necessarily a far test. I don't know if test drive off-road is really, to be honest. It seems disproportional to me, but yeah, maybe it's not. Make of it what you will. I'm just reporting what I've found. I don't have any Unreal Engine games to hand, except ones that really want later video cards, and so aren't worth testing here, because neither card supports them, and that really wouldn't be all that far of a test, I guess. And they just run like crap anyway, assuming they ran at all. Possibly the most important factor in all of this, the Blade T64 was cheap. One of those cards which used to cost peanuts and wound up in cheap OEM machines, although you would have been able to buy this in smaller computer stores whether it was meant to be on sale at retail or not. I'm almost certain I remember it on the price list of one of the ones we used to have around here, but by then I had a faster machine and no need for such a card. The Blade T64 doesn't use a lot of power, and I could honestly envision it being stuck in a crappy time-branded laptop alongside a Transmeta Crusoe processor or something. For a 2001 card, it's fairly weak, but that's probably because you're completely spoiled by now having access to much faster GeForce and Radeon cards of that time. You can't really compare the Blade to those cards, because those cards were expensive. They were aimed at users who wanted high performance, or who could afford it, more importantly. Those were what you would have bought if you'd built a more powerful Athlon system. At this time, the AMD K62 was still quite popular as a budget option, where performance wasn't quite as important, or couldn't be afforded. From what I can gather, the K62 was still selling quite well in places like Eastern Europe, I could be wrong on this, and I know people from that part of the world do watch this channel sometimes, so, well, feel free to correct me if that's the case. I'd like to know. Still, if you were buying K62 or building one at that time, you wouldn't have put something like a Radeon 7500 in there, let's be honest. And you would more likely have used an older card from a previous system, or a cheaper card, like the Blade T64. And in that regard, the Blade T64 is actually quite good, because it offers compatibility and stability. I haven't had it crash on anything yet, and I've not really seen any compatibility issues, so yeah, it's quite dependable in that regard. I'm sure such problems must exist, they do with every card, but I haven't run into them yet, so it's not just throwing them out left, right and centre for no good reason. Overall, it is quite utilitarian compared to the more market options. The control panel applet, for example, contains only the most basic functions, but they're good enough for such a device. Just because something's low-end doesn't automatically mean it sucks. Oftentimes, you can have a lot of fun with low-end hardware. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say here, so I'm going to pass you back to the guy on camera now. So there we go, that's the Trident Blade T64, or Cyberblade XP, or whatever the hell you want to call it. It's a low-end card, it gives pretty good low-end performance, to be honest. Trident get a lot of stick, they get this really bad rep, and I don't know that it's entirely undeserved, they made some terrible cards. But they could make good shit when they wanted to, they actually made a good PCI card for TOS believe it or not, and nobody seems to have latched on, because it's still way cheaper than the Cirrus and the S3 stuff, and it's easily on par with that. So, I don't know. I could do a quick video on that if you want. 
But I don't really have much else to say other than, yeah, remember when this Blade T64 was around? Things like the, the SIS S6326 and such were, were still really commonplace. And I can guarantee I've used much worse cards than this from this time period. It's not half bad. I'm genuinely impressed. I don't know what we'll do next time. Maybe a video about some Pentium board. Uh, I did have other games in this list of like what I was going to show, but it's something like Need for Speed 3 where there's just not really much tangible difference between it running here and running on the Voodoo. It works fine on both, and the frame rate's that high as that you can't really see it. It runs on really low-end stuff, Need for Speed 3. It's, uh, it's quite impressive how it pulls it off, to be honest. Uh, also, let me know what you think of the, the video quality in this. I, I'm stepping things up a bit. I may be able to go a little bit farther, so let me know if you like that. Probably going to change some channel graphics out in the videos. Uh, I don't know that'll make them less garish, but I might tweak them a little bit. I'm not sure yet. I've got some ideas. It's not going to be a huge change. Just soften things up, make them a little bit less offensive on the eyes than they are now. Because it may be a little bit difficult to focus on things. Mostly my 4.3 to 16.9 border and shit. And uh, our test drive off road 3, I think it's actually DirectX 7, so that'll be run at why it's not running very well, uh, I would think. I don't know, I'd, I'd have to test farther, but, you know, I figured I'd, I'll leave it in here to show you, you know, how things scale, I guess. It, but yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't really have any, anything else to go on about here. It's, this card I thought would be awful, it's not. It's very compatible, it's very stable, it runs curled. If you have a K6 or something, and you happen to have one of these cards, why not stuff it in, give it a try? It'll probably do what you want in a system like this. I, I haven't run anything that really needs more power that I'd want to run on a K6 anywhere, because it's just going to start hurting the CPU anywhere. You know, it's going to run better on my Athlon, things like that. So I, I'm not really... Yeah, I, I can't see any reason I would want to upgrade this card anytime soon. I find it odd how there's a fan header on it, because it really runs just lukewarm, basically. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I have anything else to say on this matter. So, I guess I'll see you next time. I'm uh, not sure when it'll be or what it'll be. We'll see how things work out. But in the meantime, I'm High Treason, thanks for watching, and as always, remember, don't be a screw-up, load DOS 622 up. Oh yeah, and a quick note for the end of this video, I always have this shot and when I make videos, and I, I swear, I earn more, it just, and I do wear them, it just rolls around this way, and I don't know how, because I'm probably worse than a woman in that regard, I must own at least 50 shirts and fuck knows how many t-shirts, and they're all stuffed in a wardrobe and in some boxes, I do wear those, you know, I, I do get a wash and change my clothes, I don't know why I always have this one I want to make videos, it's not a deliberate choice, it just turns out, I'm just noticing as I'm going through everything, it's like grey t-shirt, grey t-shirt, grey t-shirt, oh shit. But then it's like photographs, most photos of me have this same sort of khaki coloured one on, so don't ask me, it's just a strange coincidence, fuck knows. Maybe it's my mood or something, it's like I'm in the mood to wear this one, that happens to coincide, I'm in the mood to start work on filming a video. But I don't know. Anyways, I, I'm definitely out of here now. I'll see you around.